All right, so we're doing lesson 37, which is on applications of vectors. So there's going to be several things that we're going to be doing with applications throughout the chapter, um, but this is kind of the first thing. So the first one says, a hot air balloon is rising vertically at 13 feet per second, while the wind is blowing horizontally at 4 feet per second. Okay, so what's going to happen is the wind is going to push this hot air balloon off course, okay? Stop talking, please. All right, so it says, find the speed V of the balloon and the angle theta that it makes with the horizontal. So this is kind of just a quick review of what we've done before. It's just phrasing it in a different way, right? It's almost like it's saying that this vector is 4, 13, right, the component form, and it's asking for the angle that it makes and its length, right? So that's what we're doing. So the speed ends up being the magnitude. So our speed is going to be like the magnitude of V, which is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 13 squared which I went ahead and found for you. It's going to be the square root of 16 plus 169, which is the square root of 185. Okay, now in these application problems, we don't often say, go the square root of 185 miles per hour. That's weird. <laughs> so on these ones, I will allow you to round to three decimal places. So it's going to be 13.601 feet per second, okay? All right, now the angle theta that it makes with the horizontal, we learned a, a, an equation yesterday to help us find theta. Emily, put your computer away, please. So we have tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Do you guys remember that equation? So we're going to take the y value, which is thir 13, and divide by the 4. And we do inverse tangent. And we end up getting 72.897 degrees. Okay. And that makes sense for this picture, right? Okay, so that's kind of a quick application of, that involves something that we learned last, yesterday. Now, this next one. I'm going to show you two different ways to do the next problem. So pay attention to the picture and how we can do this without vectors. And then we're going to talk about how we can make it easier on ourselves with vectors. So it says a vector w of magnitude 150 points southwest. Okay, if I'm very vague like that and I just say southwest, you guys know what direction southwest is, right? So south and west is going to be right here, smack dab in the middle. What would the theta be for that? 180 plus 45. Yeah, it's going to be 225 degrees. Okay. It says resolve the vector into southerly and westerly components. So it's basically saying how far south is it going, how far west is it going. Okay. The magnitude is 150. So if it was like a plane or something, it would be like 150 miles per hour, kilometers per hour. There would be some kind of thing like that. All right. So we want to know what the components are. We want to know component form, something like that. Okay, so we just talked about how to do that as well, right? So the component form is going to be 150 cosine of 225. I'm going to run out of room here. And then it's going to be 150 sine of 225. Okay, so we end up getting, when I found these numbers, I mean, you could find the exact form, which is negative 75 root 2 and negative 75 root 2. Um, because 225 is like a unit circle value, it's going to be like negative root 2 over 2 and, and negative root 2 over 2. Uh, but if you found like the actual, like three decimals, 106.066. So both of them are negative 106.066. So when it says things like resolve into southerly and westerly components, I mean, that is what I would call component form. But since it's saying that direction there, I would probably write something like 106.0, whoops, I forgot my zero there, 0 0.066 miles south <laughs> and 106.066 miles West. Does that make sense? So you know that you're going both south and west. This isn't the one that had two different ways. Sorry, I was thinking it was this one. It's the next one. All right. So in your paragraph, it says vectors are used whenever we're dealing with objects that travel at a certain speed, particularly airplanes and boats. They're used for navigation a lot. 
Uh, vectors are super important. If you've taken physics, you know this, but super important. So it says the magnitude of the vector is the speed. So clearly, you, you want to know what direction that planes are traveling in to avoid collisions and so on. Hi. Thank you. Oh, no problem. It was really good. Good. All right, to avoid collisions and estimate how long it will take for them to arrive at their destination. So the most stressful job in the United States, one of the most stressful jobs, do you know teaching. what it is? <laughs> yeah, teaching, I agree. <laughs> uh, but no, it's being the air traffic controller, right? It's, it's super stressful. You get ma paid a ton of money for doing it, but it's super, super stressful because there are just planes all over the place. Uh, and you have to make sure that they don't collide with each other. And sometimes there are super close calls. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my gosh, how did this even, how did they get that close, seriously? Um, so vectors are important for that. So it says in the last example, I was very vague on the direction. I just said something like southwest. Like air traffic controllers are not going to say, go southwest, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's probably not good. So, um, so in that problem, we assumed it was perfectly southwest. But we've talked about bearing before. We're going to go back to using bearing. But the thing with vectors is whenever I use bearing, I have to change it into the standard angle. So write yourself a note there. So... If you have bearing, change to a standard angle. Do you know what I mean by that? Like a, like a unit circle angle, like starting at zero degrees on the unit circle. So starting along the positive x-axis and rotating around counterclockwise. Does that make sense? So if I say a bearing of 190 degrees, let's do a little tiny sketch here. 190 degrees. Do you guys remember what that was? Yeah, but bearing starts from the north-south line, so it's going to be like this, right? Okay. It's going to be 190 degrees like that. What would our standard angle be if I started here and went around? Be 180 plus another 80 degrees, or another, yeah, 80 degrees? Yeah, 260. Thank you. 260 degrees. Does that make sense? So when you say a bearing of 190, we're actually using 260. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> Okay, and then it says it turns and sails 34 miles on a bearing of 334. So again, another little sketch, 334. That means we're going to be, whoa, I missed it. We're going to be how many degrees away from that, the top? Oops. Man, I'm just really messing up here. How do I get rid of this? <laughs> it's nothing. We'll just, we'll just delete it. It's, it's not there, right? All right. So if I'm doing this bearing... So 334 degrees is going to be 26 degrees away from the vertical line. Do you guys understand that? 360, because it's 334 degrees around this way. So then what would the standard angle be, starting from here and going over? Yeah, it's 116, 90 plus 26, right? Okay, so just know that you have to change those. <laughs> That's like the most annoying part about the problem. Everybody always forgets that. So pay attention, guys. All right, so it says find the distance of the ship from port A. So here's how we would have done these problems when we did like law of cosines, law of sines. So pay attention to the picture. Um, if you started out on a bearing of 190 degrees, that means you would be going over here, right? You go a distance of 44 miles. From there, you now turn. That means that you have to draw a new little bearing thing. And you're turning and going on a bearing of 334 for a total of 34 miles. And you would have to find all of those little angles in there. Okay, and it's kind of annoying. You would have to, like, this angle right here that I'm drawing in red, what angle is that? 10. It's 10 degrees, right? Because it was 190, it was 10 degrees past 180. This angle right here ends up also being 10. Think about geometry, alternate interior angles. Totally 10. What about, let me draw it in green. What about this one? Do we know what angle that is? Uh, 26, yeah, 26. So you end up getting this picture where it says, well, find the distance of the ship from port A where you have this picture right here. So let me kind of draw this triangle really big. You have 
and it's not like a 90 degree angle or anything. You have 44 miles here, you have 34 miles here, and you have, this ends up being 36 degrees because it was the 10 plus the 26, and you're asked to find x. Would you be able to do that with law of cosines? You could, right? You would end up doing law of cosines and it'd be x squared equals 34 squared plus 44 squared minus 2 times 34 times 44 times cosine of 36 degrees. And you would find it. You would end up getting that x is equal to, I did it. I wanted to make sure that I had exactly the same thing. 25 I actually did it by law of cosines and I was like, oh crap, I forgot to use vectors. <laughs> so that's what you would get. Pretty complicated though, right? The picture in itself is hard. Did you guys find the picture to be kind of hard? Yeah. So here's what we do instead. We find the first vector, we add it to the second vector to get its resultant vector. Does that make sense? So our first vector, so ignore all this, we're going to do it instead by the vector method. Because it was 10 plus 26. All right, so here's our vector method. The first ship, or the, the ship originally, went on a bearing of 190. We said we were using 260 degrees for that, right? So its component form, if it's going 44 miles per hour on an angle of 260, we write it like that, 44 cosine of 260, comma, 44 sine of 260, right? We then add it to the second vector. So the ship now turns. It's going in another direction, so we're adding this other vector to it. What's the other vector going to be? 34 what? Cosine of 116, 34 sine of 116. And when we do that, you can do it all on your calculator. I mean, you end up getting whatever 44 cosine of 260 is plus 34 cosine of 116, comma, 44 sine of 260. And you can do this all on your calculator. You don't have to write all this out. 34 sine of 116. All right, and we add it together. So go ahead and do that for me. So 44 cosine of 260 plus 34 sine of 116. Oops, not, that's 34 sine. 34 cosine of 116. Did you guys get a number? Negative 22.545. Did you get that? Yeah? Yes? No? Are you guys trying this along with me? I usually store it, just in case I need it. So I'm going to store it as A. Yep, STO, alpha A. And then if you guys don't like typing all that stuff out, do you guys know the function on your calculator where you can do second enter? It pulls up the last thing you did. So do second enter, clear, second enter. And now just change all your cosines to sines. So the other one ends up being um, negative 12 point, uh, 12.773. And I'm going to store that as B. All right, so the question is, find the distance of the ship from port A. That's the component form of that resultant vector. Okay, how do I get the uh, distance? The magnitude, right. So then find the magnitude. So that's when it's nice if you've saved it as A, because you can just do A squared plus B squared under a square root. So we get 25.912. Is that what we had before? It is. It works both ways. All right, now that we know that vector method, it's going to be a lot easier. I shouldn't have run you through the law of cosines. Let's do one more of these. All right, so I forgot to put a, a ship one on your homework. So there will be one eventually. I'm going to put a ship one on an eventual homework. But I did put a plane and a wind one on there. I put a couple of these on here. All right, so it says an airplane has an airspeed of 100 kilometers per hour. 
its bearing is 64 degrees. So again, we have bearing of 64. So that means this angle right here is 64. What is the standard angle then? What'd you guys say? 26, yes. So we're using 26 here. Use 26 degrees. All right, and then the other one, this is a bearing as well, I didn't say on a bearing of 334. Wind is blowing at a bearing of 334. What's its angle going to be all the way here? Because going all the way from here around is 334. So we had how many degrees that were left? Yeah, we had 26 that was left. And then we had the 90 here. So what do we get? Right? Didn't we have 26 and 90? Yeah. So we're going to have 116 again. All right, so what should the plane's actual bearing be in order to maintain this current track? So sometimes we'll say, what is the ground speed? What is the direction on the ground that the plane must travel instead of like in the air, like as if there were no wind or something? All right, so here's what we're going to do. Every single time you have a problem like this, I want you to come up with the airplane and the wind, both of the components. All right, so the airplane's component, it's very, very easy. All it is is your speed times the cosine of the angle, right? So your speed is going to be 26, and you're going to have cosine of 64, 26. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, 26, cosine, not 64, darn. Didn't we determine that was 26 degrees? Now it's really confusing because they're both 20. Hang on. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong thing. The airplane has an airspeed of 130, right? So 130 cosine of 26 and 130 sine of 26. So it's speed and it's a standard angle. Okay, the wind, that one's going 26 kilometers per hour and it's cosine of 116. Do you guys see that? So then sine of 116. All you do is you add them up. That's it. Add them together. So you're taking the first spot. You're doing the 130 cosine of 26. And you're adding it to 26 cosine of 116. You're taking those x components and adding them together. When we do, we get 105.446. And I store it just in case I need it. And then if I do second enter, I can quickly change things to signs for the second one. And I get um, 80.357 right there. So that is going to be the um, component form. Don't pack up. You can stay like two minutes extra. You're fine. All right. So this is going to be our component form. So if I ask for the component form, that's what we have. Okay. The question is, what is the bearing? So we're going to go and we're going to find the angle. So we're going to do tangent of theta equals our y value divided by our x value. So that's when it's nice if you do, um, your, if you store your values, because now you can just do the b over the a. All right, and I end up getting theta is equal to 37.3. So one last step. I know you guys are like, come on. All right, that's 37.3 right here. So what's the bearing? Uh, 52.7. Yeah, 52.7, something right. I'll do uh, three decimal places, 52.690. Okay, so that's kind of what your homework looks like. So let me pause this and then pass out your homework. And then go ahead and get your homework ready to turn in as well, right? How was it?